Hey, okay, so I am really late doing this video. I apologize. We had a lot going on today. So today was not my normal day of um, like getting things uploaded or shared or however. So anyway, let me share this real quick. Early, early, early this morning, about 3 o'clock this morning, um, because I knew of what we had going on today, I wanted to make sure that me and Daddy had our time together um, and that that was first and foremost over everything. Um, so when I got up this morning, um, again, I didn't know like where I was going to start it, if I was going to start it. Um, I didn't know if I was going to start at uh, back at um, Psalm chapter 12 verse. I think it was verse number anything six that I did the other day. I don't even know if I recorded for, for Psalm chapter 12. I know I did a lot of recordings for Psalm chapter 11 verse 3 because that's where uh, God asked the question when the foundations are broken. What can the righteous do? But in Psalm chapter 12, verse 6, um, oh, uh, I did do the writing for Psalm chapter 12. That was an amazing, amazing study. I wrote for it on my website, and I think I shared it to Facebook. So in case I didn't, I'm going to make sure that I do that. But that's the one where it says, the words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. And I went to go look up the purification process of silver because, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like there are many um, scriptures where it talks about us being purified, you know, like silver, like gold, you know, so, and that is quite a process. It's quite a process. But anyway, so today, um, early, early this morning, I had a lot of things that were on my mind. I'm actually looking for something, y'all. So forgive me for all this moving around. I had a lot of things that were on my mind early, early this morning that I just needed um, answer from the Lord about. And so when I got up this morning, I uh, felt led to go to Psalm chapter 3. So here it is. Psalm chapter 3 is, is, I mean, not chapter 3, chapter 13. Psalm chapter 13 is a short chapter, so I'm going to start it out. It was actually the first uh, three verses, really the first two verses. It says, this is how it starts off. This is the New King James Version. It says, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy, enemy be exalted over me? And so I was just sitting with that early, early this morning, and I wanted to go over this with you. Um, like the emphasis, the writer of this psalm, David, you know, the emphasis was on how long. And I realized that this was an issue of patience. And immediately what came to me was the scripture in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, which says that um, we have need of endurance. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go and read that real quick. Um, a lot of times when we go through stuff, you know, we complain as we're going through and, and you know, we we uh sometimes we curse it we shouldn't but for the most part it's the complaining oh my gosh that happens when you're going through some type of trial or tribulation that you feel like for whatever our reason you're going to be in forever when in actuality you're not but this is what hebrews chapter 10 verse number 36 is it 36 yeah, 36. This is what it says from the New King James Version. It says, for you have need of endurance 
so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. You have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So there where the emphasis four times now in two verses, four times, David said, how long, like how long, oh my gosh, how much longer do I have to go through this? How long you have need of endurance. So a lot of times when you're going through something and you ask somebody, you know, pray for me, I need you to pray. Pray for me. Oh my gosh, I'm going through whatever this is. You know, I, I just I just need prayer, you know. And so um the answer that I have learned is that the prayer that you need, what you need, the answer that you need is you need endurance. Um and one of the fruits of the spirit is long suffering. Haha, <laughs> long suffering. And so that um to be able to go through something, you know, and to be able to wait on the Lord and trust the Lord and not give up and not give out. So that was the first thing. So going through this again, I looked at each one of these points because four times now, again, four times the psalmist said, David said, how long? So I knew this was something that he needed endurance in. So now I started looking at each of these four points. So the first one, he said, oh Lord, will you forget me forever? Will you forget me forever? And so as I sat with that and I read that, I was drawn to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. There, 1 Peter, I mean 1 Peter. (laughs) There, Peter, who is the writer of this book, um, he was addressing his book to the pilgrims. Now, a pilgrim is a person that lives in a place that is not their permanent residence. Um, and then for us who are believers, this is not our home. Heaven is our home. This is not our home. So I I realized that this book of Peter was addressed to, this first book of Peter was addressed to um those who are are I, I don't know what another word for pilgrim is I write it down somewhere else. Uh it's addressed to those who are um what is another word for pilgrim? Let me think. Let me uh think if I have it written down here. Um I I like in my mind I keep hearing alien resident but that's not the word that I want to use um (laughs) um, somebody who's been displaced somebody that is um temporarily in a temporary situation I, I I don't know the word for it that I'm looking for uh you probably are thinking of it and and know the word but this is a a um good chap a good book to read not chapter but a book to read for those who um are in temporary situations that you feel like you've been in this temporary situation whatever it is you feel like you've been in it for a long time um the question that the psalmist david asked he said how long oh lord will you forget me forever you know the other person that felt like that was noah Noah had been in that ark for a long time. And in chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And God remembered Noah. And I remember in the book that I wrote called um, Keep on the Watch, I addressed that. And I'm like, did you forget Noah? And that wasn't the case. So again, we have need for endurance. And we need to understand that God's timing is not our timing. He will bring us out of whatever situation that we find ourselves in. But we got to be patient and we got to wait on him. And when that feels difficult, when that seems to be a hard thing to do, to wait on the Lord, um, when it feels like, you know, he's forgotten you, he's not answering you you've been in this predicament for a long time you know you don't know when you're going to get out when you are feeling that type of way the the book of first peter the entire book it's not a long it's not one of those long 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 books now let me tell you a long book to read would be psalms you know would be uh isaiah jeremiah those are some kind of long books but the book of first peter 
it's not a long book at all. As a matter of fact, the book of First Peter is how many chapters long? Let me see. The book of First Peter is five chapters long. It's five chapters long. So it's not long at all. Um, but because of who it's written to, in verse 1 it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect or chosen ones, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, we were chosen for this. And so there's sometimes that there are going to be things that we're going to have to go through. And in the process of going through, we have got to trust God. As a matter of fact, I'm still in First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, uh, well, verse 2 ends by saying, grace to you, grace, which is God's strength that enables us to um, endure different things. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. It says, verse three, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled um, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, do not give up. Number one, you are not forgotten. But but um, there's an inheritance that is kept for you by the power of God through faith for salvation. Check this part out. Ready to be revealed in the last time. And that is where we are now. We're in these last days. Do not give up. Do not give up. It says verse number six of First Peter chapter one. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may prove, I mean, may, found, may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love. I'm about to read that again because that one was good. This is First Peter chapter 1 verse 6. It says, in this you greatly rejoice. It says, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith. Now, here's the purpose of your enduring and what you're going through, whatever it is. It says um, this is this is why you're going through. It says that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire may be found to praise, honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory receiving the end of your faith the salvation of your souls of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that will come to you searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that will follow. To them, it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, 
be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. My, 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 my. It says, verse 17, uh, chapter 1 of First Peter, it says, And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible, corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead, and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now, this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. That was just the entire first chapter. I'm going to let y'all handle the uh, chapters two through five, but that was the first chapter of first Peter. And, and it, it was very encouraging and reminding us that we're not forgotten. There's a purpose for which we are, um, going through things, the different things that we go through. There's a purpose for it. So, um, the second, was will you hide your face from me again uh david is asking four times now he asks how long so the second point was will you hide your face from me and i began to look up that one and there was like let's see two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty two twenty four twenty six twenty eight thirty one it's thirty one scriptures that I have listed here and I marked off a couple of them because they were really good. So I'm just going to share the couple that I marked. The first one being Isaiah 54, 8. Um, I put stars by uh, a lot of them. And these scriptures, again, have to do with God hiding his face. So one of the things David asked is how long will you hide your face from me? And so if you feel like God has hidden his face from you, there's a reason for that. So here, verse uh, chapter 54, and it's actually verse 4 through 8. I have this marked off. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 4 and read down to verse 8. It says, this is Isaiah chapter 54. It says, do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer is is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. 
so um here it speaks of him hiding his face and it also shows that there was some anger in there but i like that verse because along with the anger it also lets us know of a restoration a time of restoration because he says with everlasting kindness i will have mercy on you so here's another one that i have um a star by and it's isaiah chapter 59 Verse 2. Oh, all the ones I put stars in was Isaiah. Oh, this one in Ezekiel. So Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. This is what it says. Again, in reference to um, what it means to have God hide his face from us. So verse 2, Isaiah 59, verse 2 says, But your iniquity, which is sin, but your iniquity has separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear so um again it says your iniquity have separated you from god your sins have hidden his face from you um so as he's letting us know what causes that to happen with us whenever we feel like god has hidden his face is sin and so when we experience that what we should do is repent um verse number 20 of isaiah chapter 30 says and though the lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore but your eyes shall see your teachers so again that um i did a whole study on that and that's on youtube also and um that has to do with a restoration um, afterwards it talks about the things that we go through because of our sin because of our iniquity but it also um, talks about the restoration because uh, in verse 31 it says your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left um so it's, it's that restoration that comes after just like when a parent disciplines a child they don't stay angry forever they might be irritated or annoyed at that moment um this next one is ezekiel chapter 39 verse 29 and it says and i will not hide my face from them anymore for i shall have poured out my spirit on the house of israel says the lord but I would not hide my face from them anymore. Again, that speaks of the restoration. So look, y'all, whenever you feel like or find yourself feeling like um, like you're separated from God as if uh, his face has been hidden from you, um, whenever you feel that way, uh, what you need to do is fast and repent. Repent. Um, so here's the next one. Um, how long? Again, how long? Talking about that. Have need of endurance now. How long? It says, shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Okay, so that one there, that, that's something that you don't want to do. He said, shall I? You know, like how long? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Listen, God tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, to trust not in our own understanding, um, but in all our ways to acknowledge God and he will make our path straight. So again, when we find that we have are going through something, you know, we don't want to at that point lean on our own understanding. No, we need to hit our knees. You know, we know what we know. So we need to hit our knees and seek the Lord. Um, the last one of the how long, <laughs> how, I, I want to call it the how long series because this is really amazing. I found it very, very amazing uh, as I was looking over it. And so he says, how long will my enemy be exalted over me? And so with that one there, the first thing that came to mind as I was looking at that is the fact that we're told in Ephesians, and, and this is something that was brought back to my attention too back then, 
when David was doing all these writings, when the Psalms was being written, they did not have the complete Bible like we have today. They didn't have the New Testament then. They only had the Old Testament. So they didn't know the things that we know today. They didn't have that new covenant um, based off of love and, and mercy. They didn't have that, that uh, covenant of grace. They didn't have that. So he says, um, how long will my enemy be exalted over me? And because of the time that we're living in today, the first thing that came to my mind was Ephesians chapter 6. I think it's verse 12, where we're told that our warfare is not against flesh and blood. So at that point, you know, because when I read God's word, I read it for a practical application for today. And so realizing that my enemy is not flesh and blood, when I read that, how long will my enemy be exalted over me? I found myself pondering over it, really thinking deeply over it. And um, I realized that it's important that we know who our enemy is. And at that point, I got to think about the enemy in a me. And so... Um, the enemy in a me who wars the war that goes on within me is the the flesh versus the spirit and so my fleshly man versus my spirit man um and so because of that it says how long will my enemy be exalted over me in other words as i'm looking at that i'm not at this point looking at the next person or somebody that um, I might feel that I have some type of attitude towards and or however, and I'm not supposed to have no attitude towards anybody, but instead I'm looking at myself and I'm looking at, um, the things of my flesh that really need to be crucified. The things of my flesh that, um, is at odds with my spirit, the things that I don't want to do. Um, I like how Paul wrote it. He said, the evil that I don't want to do is what I do. And the good that I want to do is not what I do. And so that, that battle that um, I have within myself. And I like how he said, how long will my enemy be exalted over me? And so definitely, definitely, this isn't a, a fight. Definitely, this is a war that I can overcome with the help of God Almighty. So in verse number three of Psalm chapter 13, he says, consider me, consider and hear me, O Lord, my God, enlighten my eyes. And that reminds me of Jeremiah 33, three, where God says that we can ask of him and he will show us great and unsearchable things. And in James chapter one, verse four and five, where he says that if there is, um, uh, if we lack in wisdom, um, we can ask of him and he will answer us. So when there are areas that we find ourselves battling in, areas where we find ourselves, like it says, will you forget me forever? You know, we need to remember that. Um, no, God won't forget us forever. You know, we're going through things we're going through for a purpose, but we can always turn to God's word. If there's something that we don't understand, we can always turn to God's word and ask God. So if there's a reason for whatever reason that we're feeling like, um, he's forgotten us, you know, again, humble ourselves, repent. Um, even if we don't know what it is that we need to repent of, um, if we feel like he's hidden his face from us, his word tells us that the only reason that he would do that is if there is sin or iniquity that will cause a separation. And so we need to we need to fix that. We need to fix that and get before him and clear that up. We don't need to lean on our own understanding. We don't need to lean on ourselves and, and, and figure. And, you know, we, there's a lot of people that do that. There's a lot of people that. Um, feel some type of way, feel some type of separation. And instead of getting it right before the Lord, they just go off and do their own thing. They they draw away from the body of Christ or the church. They draw away from the body of Christ. And so um, that's something that we need to not do. You know, at a time where we're feeling distant and separated from the Lord, we need to run to him and we need to beseech him and fast and pray as a matter of fact that's one of the things that jesus said about his disciples when 
he was asked by the disciples of John, he said, they said, the Pharisees fast, we fast, but why do your disciples not fast? And Jesus said to them that there's going to come a time when they do fast, you know, but as long as the bridegroom is with them, they won't. So when you have that good relationship with God, when you are in a close relationship with God, there is no reason for you to fast because you have that. But the minute that you feel separated, we are supposed to fast and pray and seek God's face and repent, humble ourselves before the Lord and repent and um, mend that situation. So uh, the question David asked was, how long? You know, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long, O oh Lord, will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel of my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? In other words, he was grieved for whatever it was. He was grieved daily. So he's saying, how long will I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? So the answer to that, how long? For as long as it takes for you to get on your knees and repent before the Lord and and uh, seek the Lord's face and invite the Lord into your life and ask the Lord to take over, take the will, take the reins, take over. I need your help. I'm sorry. Whatever I did, I should not have done it. And, and I'm sorry, but acknowledge your wrong. Acknowledge. So until you do that. So, so, oh. Now, with that being said, and I'm going to end on this note. Now, with that being said, with all the stuff that's going on in our world today, with all the plagues that's going on, with all, how long, how long, oh Lord, will this continue to go on? How long will, will things continue to be in the situation that it is now? Um, how long will all of this continue until we all... Feel that that the need, understand that we need to hit our knees and repent before the Lord. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will pray, will seek his face and will turn from their wicked ways. He said, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive your sin and I will heal your land. So all of this that we're going through, as long as we still feel like we got this, as long as we still feel like we don't need him, as long as we feel like, like, you know, we know what we're doing, you know, while we tan up everything down here, as long as we feel that way, we're going to continue to go through. But until we get to that place where we can acknowledge our iniquity, our sin, and um, make amends for that, repent for that, and obey, Jesus said, how much longer will you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? You know, so still we start being until we start being obedient. That's how long. <laughs> That's how long. That's how long. So I'm gonna finish this chapter, verse three through six of Psalm chapter 13 it says, Consider me. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. You guys have a blessed rest of your evening. Bye.